In this video, we are going to have a short tutorial on how to identify terpenes. Terpenes are basically organic compounds or polymers made of isoprene unit monomers. This is an isoprene unit monomer, and in this unit, this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, 4, and 5. So, in an isoprene unit, the carbon 5 is always bonded to a carbon 2, or there is a metal group always on the second carbon of the straight chain. This unit is brought together to form a terpene. This implies that when you take a terpene, the number of carbons in a terpene must be either 5 or a multiple of 5. So this one unique feature about terpenes. For every terpene, it must have a multiple of 5 number of carbons. This is because it is brought together by bonding of isoprene unit monomers. In a terpene compound, we have several orientations on which this isoprene unit can orient themselves. But the most predominant one is what we call the head to tail orientation or one to four orientation. Now when we take this unit, this side is called the head of this isoprene unit. And this side is the head of the isoprene unit. So the head to tail means that the head of one isoprene unit will bond to the tail of another isoprene unit. So let's have an example. If you have this as one isoprene unit, the head is always the carbon one, and the tail is carbon four. And another isoprene unit. The bonding is initiated between the fourth carbon of one isoprene unit and the first carbon of the other isoprene unit. So this is a one to four orientation or a tail to head orientation or head to tail orientation. So this is the predominant form in which most terpenes exist in an organic molecule. We can have other orientations like um, can have this one where this one is the tail and this one is the tail so this is tail to tail orientation or four to four orientation but these ones are mostly rare so in most organic compounds the orientation of the isoprene unit is always head to tail or tail to tail but the head to tail or the tail to head is the most predominant one so these are the features that you will use to identify a terpene. When you are being given an organic compound, when you are being asked to ask or to find whether it is a terpene or not, the first thing to do is to count the number of carbons in that organic compound. As you said, terpenes are polymers of isoprene in it, so it means they must have five times carbon number of carbons in the compound must be five or a multiple of five. So if you have a compound and you count the number of carbon, it's a multiple of five, then it is likely to be a terpene. It's not yet a terpene, but it is likely to be a terpene. Now, after finding the number of carbons to be a multiple of five, then you look at the orientations of the isoprene unit and see if you can identify the individual isoprene unit in that molecule. So let's take this one as an example. We have this compound. This is a beta carotene. This is a beta carotene. This is the main component of carrot, which is a precursor for synthesis of vitamin A, the vitamin for proper vision of the eye. If you want to identify whether this is a terpene, first you count the number of carbons in this compound. So here, if you count this number of carbons, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So this is 40 carbon. So it is likely to be a terpene because 40 is a multiple of 5. And isoprene unit is 5 carbon compound. This means that the number of isoprene units in this compound is going to be 8, which is 40 divided by 5. So for you to know what is a terpene, first count the number of carbon. If it is 40, then you are going to look at 
the orientations of the isoprenes or if you can identify the individual isoprenes in this compound. So let's proceed. Next, all the carbons having the metal groups, you name those carbons as carbon 2 because those are the carbons in the isoprenes where the metal group is bonded. That's an that easier way for identify it happened. So you can you name these ones as carbon two. All the carbons with the metal groups, you name them as carbon two. Then you start with the counting from the carbon one, two, and see if you can identify the individual isoprene unit and if they follow the bonding head to tail or tail to tail. So let's start with this one. Here, if this carbon is a carbon two, then it means this is carbon one. And this one is likely to be carbon 5. So it's carbon 2. This one becomes carbon 3, 4. So if this one then, this one is the first isoprene unit. Then if this is carbon 2, then this is carbon 1. Or the next isoprene unit is 5, 3, 4. So from here, this is the next likely isoprene unit. From here, this is carbon 2, this is carbon 1. Here is 3. And four. Then this one is the next likely isoprene unit. If this carbon two, then this one is carbon one. Then three, four. Then this one is likely to be the next isoprene unit. Now from here you can see that this is carbon two. It means this one is carbon three, and this is carbon four. So it means that here will be, and this will be one of the next. Isoprene. So this one is the next likely isoprene unit once again if this carbon 2 then here will be carbon 3 and here will be carbon 4 this will be 5 and this is 1 so this one is the next isoprene unit let's continue from here if this carbon 1 then here is carbon 2 it means that this is carbon 3 and this is carbon 4 and this is carbon 1 so this one is the next isoprene unit. So this one is carbon 1, it means this is carbon 4 because here is carbon 2. So 2, 3, 4. Then here is carbon 1 and this one will be 5. So you get this one to as the next isoprene unit. So basically we are going to have 8 isoprene units in beta carotene. So first you count the number of carbons in the compound then look at the orientation if it is head to tail or tail to tail or if you can identify the individual isoprene unit in their correct orientation so first count the number of carbons if it is five or multiple of five then it is likely to be then two look at the orientation of the isoprene unit or if you can identify the individual isoprene unit in the compound in the correct orientation then it makes that compound a terpene let's take another example we have this four given set of compounds very similar and we are to identify which of them is a terpene which of them is a terpene now as usual we have four compounds so the first thing to do is to count the number of carbons in these compounds if it is a multiple of five then it means it is likely to be a tepen if it is not a multiple of five then it is not a tepen at all so let's start with this one so here is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eight nineteen twenty so this one is likely to be a tepen let's come here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This one too is likely to be a tapping. You come to the C. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the C is automatic enough to tapping. Now let's come to the D. Now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This one too is likely to be a tepin. So we have A, B, and D to check which of them is a tepin because they all have 20 number of carbons, but their orientations is going to determine whether it's a tepin or not. 
let's have a look at this as i said terpenes are mostly bonded from one to four orientation or head to tail orientation so you're going to use that principle to take one which of these is a terpene now let's have a look at this one this is carbon 2 because it has metal group this is carbon 2 this is carbon 2 this is carbon 2 for the a if here is 1 and this is 2 it means here will be 3 and here will be 4 if here is 4 then it means the next one must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit and the next carbon 2 must have a metal group but this one has no metal group it means this one is not a terpene because if this one is the next isoprene unit this is carbon 4 and this one must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit the carbon 2 must have a metal group because every isoprene unit has a metal group on the carbon 2 so this principle here it disqualifies this one as a terpene because there is no metal group on the second carbon of the next isoprene unit now let's come to the second compound if you take this one you have this one as carbon 2 as usual this is carbon 2 this is carbon 2 and this is carbon 2 let's see if this one is a terpene if this is 2 then this one will be carbon 1 this one is carbon 5 as usual and this is 3 and this is 4 if this is carbon 4 then it means this one must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit this one is carbon 5, this is carbon 2 as usual, this one is carbon 3, and this one is carbon 4. So we have the first isoprene unit here, we have the second isoprene unit here. Now this carbon 4, so it means this one must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit as usual. So if this carbon 1, then here is carbon 2 as we labeled here. Carbon 2 is 5 because on the second carbon, and this one is carbon 3. This one is carbon 4. So you have the next isoprene unit. Now, if it is carbon 4, then it means the next carbon must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit. So this one is carbon 2 already because it has a metal group as we labeled. Then here is carbon 1, here is 2, sorry, this is 3, and this is 4, this is 5. So it means we've able to identify the individual isoprene unit in their correct orientation so it means compound b is a terpene compound b is a terpene let's come to compound d now for the d this is carbon 2 carbon 2 carbon 2 carbon 2 let's see we have this as carbon 1 this is 3 and this is 4 so this one must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit. Do you discover 1? This is 2, and this must be 3. Here must be 4. So if here is 4, so this is the first isoprene unit, the second isoprene unit. Forget about the hydrose, it's just an oxidized form. So it means this one is a terpene or an oxidized form of a terpene. So if this carbon 4, it means the next bond must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit. But here is the case, this carbon has a metal group on it, showing that it is carbon 2 of the next isoprene unit, which is a deviation. So this one makes this one not a terpene. If this carbon 4, then the next one must be carbon 1 of the next isoprene unit. But here is the case, the next molecule is carbon 2 because it has a metal group so it means it disqualifies this one as a terpene so therefore this one too is not a terpene so among this giving four set of compounds only B is a terpene because we can identify the individual isoprene unit in their correct orientation first count the number of carbons in the compound if it is a multiple of five then it means it is likely to be a terpene if it's not a multiple of 5, then you even take it out. So this one was 19, so we disqualified it. It's not a terpene at all. The remaining 3 are all 20, 20, 20. So now you are going to see if you can in identify the individual isoprene unit in their correct orientation. If you're able to identify them in their correct orientation, it means then it is a terpene. Here was 20, but when we look at isoprene unit orientation, realize that 
It does not follow the, the principle of isoprene is bonding in a terpene. So this one, this is carbon one, two, three, four. The carbon two must have a metal, so it's a deviation. When we take this one, this carbon one, two, three, four. So the carbon two has a metal, but the next one, one, two, three, and four. If this four, then it means the next one must be carbon one. But here's the case carbon two, so it deviates from the isoprene unit principle, bonding principle. So it makes this one a terpene. But these ones are in their correct orientation. It has a multiple of five number of carbons, and the isoprene unit can easily be identified, or they are in their correct orientation. So it makes this one a terpene, but the rest are not terpene. So basically, that's how terpenes are being identified when you are being given a set of compounds to identify which, is a, which one of them is a terpene. Thanks for watching. Can you like and subscribe to the channel so that we keep in touch? Thank you.